mean, I'll turn it up a little bit so I can hear myself better. Yeah, ooh, I'm freaking ooh. death. <laughs> oh, ooh, yeah. Ooh. Do you want to do like in, um, English covers of animes? Because <laughs> we can't speak fluent Japanese. I was. <laughs> I don't know that one. I know one. Sasagiyo, Sasagiyo, Shiyato, Sasagiyo. You can also do Inferno. Oh, yeah. How does it even start? Man, I am putting on the. I'm bit on the spot. I can't do it. I can't do this shit. We should probably get into the intro now. Psh, screw it. We're going to keep singing. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Binger's Anime Edition. As always, I'm your host, Mo. And I'm Maddie, and we're just a little podcast that talks about different animes with our fellow weeps out there. And I'm going to be the first one to say, I feel like it's been forever since we've done this for some reason. Yeah, I don't, we literally just did it not too long ago. I mean, I later like. only a couple days ago. Well, I mean, we skipped on Tuesday because, but yeah, I got sick and... I got everyone on sick, so we've been pushing back recording sessions, but we're yeah. also still like to take down the the veil for everyone. We're like three weeks ahead of schedule, and we just keep uploading shit, and we don't take weeks off. So once school hits, we're gonna be dying. But yeah, which I'm kind of glad though that we're taking we're like three weeks ahead. So when school starts, like we're gonna probably need those right oh, when yeah, school for starts, sure. and so like we already know that the, like, there's gonna be a couple times, but. Like, right before classes start, we're going to, like, record a ton of top tens and stuff. So that's kind of going to be, like, our filler. Not filler, but, like, whenever we... Backups. Backups and stuff. And so if any of you guys have any suggestions of top tens we should record but you guys want to hear, let us know because we're about to do, like, a sit-down sesh of, like, one every single day for a week. So please let us know. Yeah, so there's about to be, like, ten to, like, seven oh, new yeah. Oh, yeah. top tens. That'll be great. I'm excited. Oh, Mo. Yes. So, what are we about to start together? Another thing we're about to do together. We're about to do D and D. Hell yeah! I don't know how this happened. I mean, we were talking with some of our friends, and now we're going to do D and D. And I am so excited. I know you're a seasoned veteran at D and D. I'm not seasoned. I mean, you're I more seasoned than I'm I am. I'm more seasoned than everyone else in the campaign. But I don't know. I kind of so like I'm not going to be DM, but I kind of want to be a DM at one point. So I'll do some one shots and DM it. But yeah. I'm excited. I'm going to play my I'm angsty I'm kind of rogue. excited too. The more we started talking about it, I was like, let's do this. Let's this is going to be it. so It'll fun. It'll be fun. Like, let's role play. I never <laughs> thought that I would play D&D, which is kind of funny considering that like I do all nerdy things. But oh, yeah. I, I never thought that I would actually play I mean, D&D. I'm kind of upset with myself because, you know, I like having my life balanced, right? I like to have a D&D group that is not associated with any other friends. Cause, I mean, associated, we can hang out, but, like, I like to have it separate. So it's kind of, it doesn't bother me, but, like, I'm laying with you and my roommate and a couple other close friends that we usually hang out together whenever we, like, party. And I'm like, oh, I have too many, I'm like, this might be too much of y'all. So I'm excited, <laughs> though. I love playing D&D, and I haven't been able to find a group to play with in college, so I'm excited. Yeah, and it can be something that, like, we do every weekend, including, like, the podcast. Oh, yeah. It'll be it's so, like it'll be Nerd so much Saturday fun. or yeah, something. Like, so, like, right now, guys, we're struggling with, like, coming up with character voices. By us, I mean me, because I don't... I play the angsty... That's the thing that you're most concerned about I, right now. Okay, okay, okay. I know that you guys are new, but it's so much more fun to play D&D when everyone has a unique character voice, and it's, like, more fun to interact. And I'm like, I'm determined to find a good voice that I can do easily, that will be fun to do... Like, you kind of got one, I think, that's going to be fairly easy once you, like, work out the kinks. Yeah. And, like, I have, I guess I could just be emo because I'm an angsty halfling rogue. But, yeah. I'm... As per usual, who's a necrophiliac. And, like, on the side, it's a quirky personality trait. It's my quirk. It's my quirk. <laughs> I'm in my hero That's kind of <laughs> That's my quirk. And, and I'm applying for UA High School. <laughs> oh, my lord uh it's gonna be so much fun no but i'm kind of excited about my character oh yeah would you want to describe it a little bit for all the fans yes i think i've got 
So I am, what's a cleric? Yes, a cleric. I'm like cleric elf thing type yeah. thing. And I think that my name is like Sybil. Yeah. I think that's what my name's going to sure. be, Sybil. Sounds good. And I come from like kind of like an aristocratic family mm-hmm, in like mm-hmm. my little area or like town that I'm from. But I'm the only cleric from this town. And so my parents use me for profit. Oh, yeah. So you're like. Yeah. So like. A cleric I'm prostitute. Like, so like. In, like, my little, like, area, I'm, like, kind of a powerful, you know, like, cleric, you know? But, and my parents... Clergyman. Yes. And so, my parents know this, and so they want to, like, use that, and so... It'll be fun. Yeah. I'm excited. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited, too. I mean, I'm clumsy, and I get hurt a lot. That's your quirk. My my character is, what, like, the complete opposite? Yeah, you're, like, a rogue halfling. I'm a halfling rogue who comes from a very rich merchant family who joined an assassin's guild and joined a dark, like a evil priestess's force. And I killed a bunch of people and I steal a bunch of shit and my brother died because of me. So, you know, typical rogue backstory, but it's angsty and hates everyone, doesn't trust anyone. And I'm going to sound super emo. And I'm also a necrophiliac since birth. And it's like a constitution saving throw. So I'm going to try to like, resist the urge you know but like i'll go pit pocket dead bodies and stuff that's my quirky side i hope no children are listening Wait, to you the know podcast. what necrophilia is right? oh i know what necrophilia is okay just but... making sure because what you said just now i was like does he know what necrophilia oh i, I is? know because <laughs> this has been a character trait since the very first campaign i ever played because my dm cursed me with this and he literally is like you did so bad at trying to intimidate this pirate she killed herself and you didn't realize it, so then you had sex with you know, you oh did Oh my gosh. You did the dirty with the corpse. You did the dirty with the corpse. Yep. That's... Because I rolled two critical fails in a row on so many things. And then I got a bunch of weird diseases and it's just part of my character now. I really hope there's no children out there listening to this. It's okay. We have this on, like, explicit. Yeah, we have this on explicit. And and, it's for these reasons. Speaking of explicit, after we did our top 10 Yandere um, list, and I was like, you know what? Our number two is a chick, but neither of us have really watched the anime for it. So you know what I did? I went and fucking watched Happy Sugar Life. I mean, like, I saw, like, half of it. Well, clearly by our review on it, you didn't watch enough of it because we did not review that woman justice. Because she did some other... We we said she killed like 20 people. Full disclosure, she did not kill 20 people. We also gave her zero for sexual assault. She definitely did some weird sex things with people that happened to be extremely underaged. And, oh, yeah, that anime fucked me up. Like, Though it was like... I was in a bad place A that couple weekend. years ago when I saw this. Fair so, enough. You know. But I don't know. That... Oh, I like... I've been very, like... That weekend, I was not in a good place. That anime just, it deals with a lot of heavy topics. It was like I came over and you were just like, what did I watch? Like, like what did I just watch? I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I would, but wouldn't recommend it. it's also, it's a horror thriller. It's suspense. It's mystery. Like you would recommend it to a more seasoned anime yes. watcher. If you are like, oh, I've watched three animes, and one of them was SAO, and then, I don't know, or in High School Host Club, and then, I don't let's say you've been following our suggestions, Monthly Girl, I would not recommend Happy Sugar Life as your next anime, because you'll be... And it's a trap, too. Oh, yeah. It's like you get sucked in. You can't stop watching. Well, but like, like the poster and everything, and even the title. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just cute. like you don't think no, that... No, it's not cute. There is sexual assault. There is kidnapping. There is rape. There is arson. There is murder. There is Stockholm Syndrome. There is major family familial abuse and abandonment issues. And But it does a great job at portraying these this abuse, you know, like... I, I, how people perceive their abusers at a very young age. I don't know. It's very I was I I was surprised by how good the animation was and the music was pretty good and just how they tried representing things in the anime. It was very interesting. There's a whole episode where you never actually see someone's voice, but he's just it's really it's really eerie. I liked it a lot though. It's it, it's a it really brings up the idea of what love is and yeah. how there's so many different forms of it. Which most uh, of forms, mm, most of the forms they portrayed were pretty wrong. fucked up. But it's easy to see how abuse from your childhood could 
push you to that point, you know, like push you to ha- that messed up view, which I don't know. Some of it like brought some bad memories up for me, and like it was just oh, it was it was a lot. I, whoo, but yeah, she deserved to be number two on that list because she she's she's crazy. But she's not the only crazy one. There was like that whole anime was just full of crazies. Oh, next is one. Next, I'm gonna watch when they cry. Yeah, I've been wanting to watch that one too, but I've been wanting to watch it's like it with 50 somebody episodes. else. It's like fifty episodes. I don't want to watch it with someone else. I do because I just want to see like how like messed up it is and stuff. Like, That's and I true. want to like watch and like be like, did you just see what happened? You I know? mean, I would be down to watch. It's just I don't like watching animes that are long with other people because I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah, no. <laughs> I also watched Overly Cautious like Hero. <laughs> But yeah, I also just finished Overly Cautious Hero, which was surprisingly good. And it's actually funny because they were the same animators for the show we're reviewing today. So this is a good segue. Do you kind of want to talk about, introduce the show we're reviewing today for all the fans? Yeah, and as last week, we, from when we drew from the jar. Drew, drew, drew from the jar. We're doing The Devil is a Part-Timer today. Yes, which you are not excited about. I mean, like, I just... You were like... (sighs) I'm like, seriously. Okay, but you were like that too with Monthly Girls. Oh, yeah, because it was a rom-com, and I'm a boy, and I like action. But you ended up liking it. Yeah, but this was a comedy, and you like comedy. I just wasn't like, you know. That's fair. But there's I was also some... like, girl, there's only like two animes in this entire jar that you have not watched that yeah. I put in there, and this is one of them. But I was just like, because there's some comedies and stuff that just like drag out, and they're not that's really true. funny. That's true, that's true. But this one, on this one hand, was really funny. Yeah, it was. Actually, I have to admit, like I, I put my hands up and I'll say, you it know, it was actually good. It was good. It was funny. I laughed out loud so many times. Oh yeah, I was at work because I watched this anime. As my, this is the second anime I ever watched after AOT. So talk about like difference in tones. But, um, that was like two years ago. So today I was like, shit, I have not rewatched this. Yet. Like I kind of remember what like starting this one like a couple years ago but i just like i think after like the second episode or something i kind of just like yeah dropped it dropped it but it's actually really good and i really liked it i rewatched it there's multiple times i was trying not to laugh out loud at work because it's pretty funny but so let's get on to production information so the devil is a part-timer was adapted from a light novel now there is a manga for the devil is a part timer, but the seas- but the anime was adapted from the light novel. Um, the studio is White Fox, which, as we said, is you know creators of Overly Cautious Hero, Re Zero, Steins Gate, Akame Got Kill, just some of the you know very recognizable names. Our director is Nato Hosoda. Our composer is Ryosuke. Nakanishi. Ryosuke. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I said that. My B. Um, it originally aired from April 4th, 2013 to June 27th of 2013. Um, our director, we couldn't, I actually couldn't find a whole lot on what other yeah. things our director had done. Um, but I did find that he was one of the directors for Mariah Nikki, which I know it's one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites, y'all. And then I if anyone wants us to review that, please let us know because I will happily rewatch that show and review it again. But I couldn't find anything for the composer. He was really hard, and so I just kind of like gave up and said, "Not a lot found." You're like, mm, "Sorry." It's a comedy fantasy, so yeah, it's a very unique premise, the anime in general. So it's very exciting in that aspect like it's 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 refreshing Mm -hmm. um do you have any other production info you had to talk about yeah uh i just wanted you know the writer for the manga and the novel is satoshi waga hara yeah so now what we've gotten credit to all the people uh, credit yeah trying to get you know give credit to where it's due so we don't get sued uh um but yeah, uh, so this is only one season, but the manga is actually still ongoing very recently. Yes, actually, it they picked it back up again in August of yeah, last so, year. Yeah, which is really exciting because it, ha- it was very well received when it first came out, this anime. And we've been waiting seven years for a second season, and it's still not here. And I really, really want a second season because I, I think really that, enjoyed this anime. I think they'll pick it back up again, though. I think 
I think they were going to start doing it very recent, recently, but then the whole, you know, corona apocalypse happened. So, like, you know, eh. Yeah, because everything has been, like, kind usually of Usually to, like, bring more, like, you know, advertisement to, like, the manga and stuff, they'll, they'll do, like, a season of, yeah. like, an anime to kind of, like. You no, know, bring the interest back up. So, yeah. I'm really holding out. There's a good chance there's enough source material, and it was well received, it was well adapted. But as of right now, like the studio that was White White Fox Studio, White right? Fox. They are busy with ReZero right now. Like they're busy, so another studio could pick it up. But we'll see what happens. I would like to see White Fox do it though, because I, I think too. they did. They, they did, did it very well the first time, and so I'd really like to see them do it again. Though I'm not opposed to another studio picking it up. Oh yeah, up. exactly. But um, I can give a quick synopsis real quick. Go for it, man. Pretty much, our anime starts. It's like, this is actually ties in well with the D&D conversation earlier. Uh, they come from, what's the city called? What's the Inta Isla. Yes, that place. Um, <laughs> Inta Isla? Isla. Isla. So it's pretty much an RPG world, the idea of like heroes versus demons, blah, blah, blah. Very D&D-like. And um, it's very, that's the premise. Pretty much. The demon lord's there with his generals, and the hero goes defeats the demon lord, and then one of the um, the last general standing takes the demon lord, and they're like, "We gotta escape, Satan!" And they like yeet out and reverse isekai to the modern world, which that's how I refer to it as. And A they reverse isekai. They reverse isekai to the modern Japan, and they get dropped there. And they lose their, like, demonic forms and are now humans because in this modern Japan, there's no magic. And they lose all their power. And now they're stuck in the Earth. Modern day yeah, Japan you know? and trying they, to, like... Now they have to get by. And, of course, like, you know, they, they want to be powerful in this new world. And, you know, the only way you can be powerful is with money. So, you know what they do? The devil gets a part-time job. Hence the name. The devil's a part-timer. And he starts working at McDonald's. Play on McDonald's. Play on McDonald's, which I thought was really funny. And like, dude, I love it when all of like the shows, like in anime, you know, switch around the names oh, yeah. and stuff. Like in this show, it's McRonald's and Kentucky. Yes, Kentucky fried, fried chicken. chicken. I was like, what? <laughs> and then like Inuyasha, it's called Wet Donalds. Is Whack it really? Donalds. Yeah, that's funny, but um, but yeah, like that's the general synopsis. Pretty much, it's a comedy about them trying to get by in this new world, and it's really interesting because it's a nice blend between the slice of life, but also this weird fantasy element of this idea of revenge because Amelia the hero comes and follows to try to kill the the devil and the demon lord, but she comes and she's like, well, shit, he's yeah. not like a terrible human being, so what do I do? So it's pretty much her trying to like also get a job and get by. Yeah, it kind of really mixes very well the like, you know, comedy, but then also mixing in like the real like tough questions yeah. of like what's real evil. Exactly. And like that's why I really want there to be a second season because it's such a unique premise. It's this idea of very fantasy elements, getting a job, and these slice of life elements, but has this underlining tone of revenge and war and becoming powerful again. And there's not really an overall arcing plot. I mean, the other than the idea is... But also I, trying to be number one in the district. Yeah, of so like, McDonald's. he wants to be the best in the area he is. He wants to be in control and powerful. And he's the only way he can do is be by being a part-time employee at McDonald's, which, no offense, but from being the demon lord that literally is murdering thousands of people in another world is kind of... The devil's castle is not quite there, I guess. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It's, it's a really interesting premise. Very refreshing. I very much enjoyed this anime. Oh, yeah. I did, too. I mean, especially, like, when I first started watching it, I watched it about halfway through and subbed because I was watching it on Netflix. But then I was, like, watching, like, the end credits at one time, and it said, English version by Funimation. And I was like, they have an English dub to this? You're like, what the hell am I doing on Netflix? Like, I was you're like, like, what? Bye. Uh <laughs> I quickly, like, turned over to, like, Funimation and started, like, you know, Which, that's watching another it thing. in dub. How was the dub? It was freaking awesome. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Like, let's just clap real quick to the dub. It was just that good. I, I just, I thought it was funnier than the sub. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so once again, we've mentioned this before with comedy. It's so much easier to understand comedy and humor when it is received in your native language. But I was worried with this anime that some of the jokes wouldn't translate well. 
But I think they ch- changed them enough without losing the premise yeah. of it that it was just funny. I, it's also, you know, he, it's like humor. It's your type of humor. For me, it was my humor. I like irony. Though I will say with, like, the, like, into Eastland, like, language and oh, then the Japanese funny. and stuff, you know, in the subbed version, it was, like, at one point I was, like, when did they switch to Japanese? And, like, you know, it was, like, kind of hard to tell mm-hmm. between. I mean, there was, like, the little, like, you know, the duns and, like, you know, and the... Yeah, I, I was so confused because when they are the other world, they're speaking a different language, and I was yeah. tripping. And then all of a sudden, they just start speaking, <laughs> speaking Jap- e- Japanese yeah. and English, and I was like... But it was easier to tell when it was in the English dub, because they switched from that language into English, and I was like, okay, I definitely know, like... You're like, I noticed it this time. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty funny. I like. I will pr- give props to this dub. I thought it was a good dub. It was a good cast, and they like yeah. played their parts really well. Like I mean, like in Monthly Girl... That was a good sub. I enjoyed watching that in sub. Yeah. And I received those jokes pretty well. It was kind of hard to follow some of them, but I still enjoyed them. But for this one, I I very much enjoyed this better because I was also watching this at work while it was like working and it was just on the background and I was trying to like get through it quickly. And I was like, I still laughed quite a bit. And I was like, oh, I like this one. <laughs> Do you want to talk about some of the great one-liners this anime Yes, I was had? just about to bring that <laughs> up. One thing I really noticed about this show is that they have amazing one-liners. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. Like, for literally most of the show, I is like they'd say something and I'd literally bust out laughing because it was just that funny. It was funny. And I didn't even think about it until, like, episode nine to, like, write down the ones <laughs> that I really liked. But... There was just, like, one in episode nine where I was like, oh, my gosh, I've got to write that down to say on the podcast because it was just so funny. And, like, some of them are like, you have major daddy issues, don't you? (laughs) Or, like, want pizza? Give me money. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Clearly, your Sadao is a big fan of Biggins. Yes. Or, like, okay, Mrs. Small Tits. And I was just like, oh. No, it's whatever tiny tits. Oh, whatever tiny tits. I'm sorry. Or, like. Or, I planted a tracker in her purse. Like forever ago, <laughs> it's just their 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 jokes are just really funny. I've got like a few more. Oh, okay, I'll let you go through them. Seems a little celestial forcey, but YOLO. <laughs> oh dear God, please forgive me for being complete and total tool. <laughs> and then like I my, think my yeah. favorite one is the um. Surely like, you can handle this like grinder grater. or something. And he's like, "Don't call me Shirley." And I was <laughs> like, "What?" Yeah, I think they were, like, cooking something, and he yeah. and it was Asiel and uh, Lucifer. It was Lucifer and that one chick, the hammer girl. Was it? Yeah, it was. I thought it was Lucifer and Asiel. No, it was but... that one chick. So, But it was Asiel and Susano. Yeah, whatever her name is. The goth I got girl. your names. I got your names. I got your names. But I'm here for input. You're here for yeah, names. Yeah, he was like, surely you can handle this, like, grader or whatever. And yeah. she's like, don't call me Shirley. He's like, don't call me that. <laughs> oh, and this, that, and that one girl, she... That girl you just mentioned. Susan O. Dressed up in super kimono and like. Yukatas. Couldn't figure out how to use any of the technology and she's just struggling hard. She like got her like information from like old like, you know, uh, Japanese stories and stuff. (laughs) Yeah. It's just. I think they handled that element very well. They Mm -hmm. get great one liners, just a lot of moments. The, The banter between characters I thought was really good. Like before we get into characters. I will say that all the characters are pretty one-dimensional, like they're pretty much cookie yeah. cutter, but their relationships between each other is what makes the show so funny. Mm-hmm. Their playful banner and their great one-liners and the humor between it, the irony of their conversation, the absurdity of the fantasy elements of how the Satan literally is Satan, and the hero is like, can I please stay the night at your place because I lost my wallet and my keys and I'm just going <laughs> to stay on your floor. And but just then like, how like Satan's like, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, whatever. Like... <laughs> you're the worst hero ever. Like you're such an oh, like my favorite's like when they're like, uh, oh, what I something of course it's something a hero would say. And then like, oh, well that's something a demon would say. And you know, yeah. and, like it's just it just that fantasy element I think added a lot of flair to the slice of life mm-hmm. elements. So but we should I think get... this is a great segue into characters. Yeah. So do you wanna Let's start with our very main character. Very, very main character. Sadao Mao, <laughs> a.k.a. <laughs> Satan. Or Mr. Mao. <laughs> Mr. Mao. Which I thought was like M-A-L, which I thought was funny. I was like, Mao, like bad, but that's not how you spell it. No. No. <laughs> Sorry. Once no. again, I'm Western. I'm whitewashing this, I guess. I guess you could say, but. 
No, but I really liked him. He was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. You know, I liked how in, like, the first few episodes and stuff, he was seen as this very, like, calm, collected character. But oh, yeah. But he quickly, like, changed into this, like, junk food eating, comic book reading. Oh, like... yeah. And he's like, I cannot damage the uniform because it is yes. <laughs> loaned to me. And all I care about is being shift manager at my job at McDonald's. And he's I like, will it'll rise. come out of my paycheck he's if like, it I gets... can't afford it. And we're struggling with money at the devil's castle right now because he's the only person <laughs> working out of this household. Just... Dude, I also like how, you know... His kind of personality switches, you know, and he's at the beginning, he's like, let's conquer into Isla and this world. And then all of a sudden he's like, nah, I just want to stay here and work at McDonald's. Yeah, he's like, I'm good. I'm good. I got my friends and like, I don't really care. He's but like, I don't want to go back. That is something I want to bring up, though. It's interesting that the only perspective we ever get of how evil and terrible the Demon King is, is from the heroes saying that he's a terrible person. But the minute he gets to the world, he's just like to Earth. He's just he's, like, he, he, wa- be he keeps with saying it. he's like, I want to conquer the world. But it almost seems like he doesn't care that yeah. much. He's not this evil human being. And it's just well, interesting. I, I think that it's also like putting him in like a new place, brought him like a new perspective. Yeah, I think he developed a lot of com- Especially compassion being for a humans. human. Yeah. You know, like back in like into Isla, like he was a demon. You know, and he ne- he didn't really understand mm-hmm, humans, mm-hmm. you know, like in one episode he was talking to the hero, you know, and he was like, I'm sorry, like I didn't really understand humans. Yeah. He's like, but now I have a better understanding of humans and so I apologize. I mean, like he didn't even understand like that they need to eat, like humans need to yeah, eat. Yeah, he didn't understand that humans eat. <laughs> and stuff. And it's just very interesting that that character development and like, oh, what what, what did he call his bike he called it uh, Dulahan. Dulahan. he's like this is Dulahan. Let's- my steed Dulahan. Ste- <laughs> i ho <laughs> and it's just there's just so many great moments in this anime that watching i was afraid that watching it a second time i wouldn't like it as much but i i think i enjoyed it more the second time and yeah it was I, pretty funny i really liked that character a lot he was he's very attractive i mean very 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 like caring i guess yeah i feel like the only really character development that we get is from like him and mm-hmm. the hero yeah i mean i wouldn't say there's much character development no there's a little bit but... i mean this is a light novel also like yeah. it's adaptation i really wanted to be second season because it kind of saw some things of what happens like they go back to the other world and do stuff there and i'm i want to see that development in the future i really wanted to be second season yeah i think a second season would do very well yeah, um, I can talk about the next character, Emmy Yusa, aka the hero. Uh, Amelia, the hero. Yeah, so pretty much, she's the hero, and she's pretty headstrong at the beginning, and she's like, "I must avenge my father," and like, in my blah, village, blah, blah, and blah, like blah. my land, blah, 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 blah. and she's like, "And I, I will kill hero, you, and I will kill Satan." So she follows Satan to the new world, and she's all like, "Yo, homie," like stalking this dude and stalking him at this house and she's like i can't believe this is satan like he has not done a single bad thing so it's this interesting dilemma of her morals as well her duty and her it's ethics like she wants him to do a bad thing so but she has a reason does. to kill him he never does anything bad he's not even like typically a man character is portrayed as a pervert but there's no one really in this anime that's portrayed as a pervert maybe her a little bit but like she's obsessed with big boobs because she's tiny tits and like i mean I don't know. It's just she's a very interesting character, but she also she has this powerful, strong moments when she's the hero. But also she breaks down and like is broken also from her. It kind of shows like her more human side because she's like half angel, half human, you know. And we see a lot of like her angel side more in like into Isla and Mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm. that. More of her like, I will kill you, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm going to fight you and I'm going to kill you. But we but in the modern Earth and. Japan, we see more of her human side. Yeah, exactly. More of her girl, like, 18-year-old self. Exactly. And she develops where she starts realizing that, you know, maybe even though he did these terrible things, but he has not done anything wrong. So I'm going to monitor him, and the minute he steps out of line, I'm going to punish him. But I want to—I want to. she says this at the end of the anime. She's like, I want a world where everyone can live peacefully. And if he has done nothing wrong and he's actually using his powers to help people, why should I punish him for that? He saved lives. He goes out of his way to help them. Yeah, because there's multiple times throughout this whole anime where, like, he could have used his powers to, like, go back to into Isla. Yeah, exactly. Or, like, cause more destruction, but he decided to, like, fix things and help mm-hmm, people. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I feel like this is a good segue to maybe the next character. Do you want to break down the next one? Yes, let's talk about Shiro Ashia or Arciel. Oh, I was like, who are you talking about? Asiel. I was like, Asiel, that's who I know him by. I love this character. Do you want to talk about him? He's so freaking funny. I love this guy. He's like the housewifey kind of, he's like, he's the right hand man of like Satan. He's like one of the generals in like Satan's like army. Yeah. Back in like into Isla, but like in the modern like world, he's like this housewife, you know, like. Oh, because he keeps getting fired from all his jobs. So he just. Taking care of like the the house while like Satan is like out working. Which also, how is he staying entertained all day when they have a one room apartment? But he's just cleaning constantly. He's also a hot mess. Like yes, he never I've gets never into. A... Realized how sick this dude gets throughout the whole anime, or like. Oh yeah, he gets like well, it's because of how high strung he gets. He's so high strung. He he's they're so the whole time they're just budging the crap out of everything they do, and there's he's like literally the mom character, and like he won't get in a fight. Like the fantasy elements, there's fight scenes. He won't fight unless he has his cape. So he'll run home to grab his cape to come help. He's like, I am here, my lord, my my king. And he's like, well, great of you to show up. Like, you are useless. And he's like breaking down because he's like, oh, no, I'm just such a mess. One of my favorite parts and stuff is like right when they've just got like adjusted to like life there, Mm -hmm. you know, and he's like. You know, how are we supposed to survive on cognac and cucumbers? And then uh, uh, Sadao, he was like, oh, well, my my job feeds me. And he's like, what are we supposed to eat? Like Big Macs every day? That, I mean, that's high cholesterol and high like, everything. Like, I can't do that. And he's like, I'm on a diet. Like, oh, and then he's like, no one cares about your diet. And just, oh, I love that character. A lot of comic relief. But also I feel like I wish I saw more of him. Yeah. Almost. Like, you can't really take that character kind of seriously. Mm-hmm. I mean, once again, I just wish there was more another season. So, yes, the next character we're going to talk about is Chio, who is your typical bubbly little, tip, the bubbly second in love, love interest. In love with the main character. You know, like, and super over the top in love. Would also, do extremely big breasted for her age type of character. Like, she works at McDonald's with. The devil. <laughs> and she's the only character that's not from Anti Isla. I think that's its name. Yeah, she's like the only like main character that like pops up that isn't from Anti Isla. Yeah, and she's just very interesting because she falls heads over heels for the Satan, literally Satan. And when she finds out that Satan's Satan, she's literally like, well, I don't care because I've never seen him done a bad thing. All I'm hearing is your side of the story. Like, I can't believe what you're saying because I've never seen him done a bad thing. And even though I can see that he clearly has demon powers... He's always used to help people. So why is he wrong while these other people that are saying they're trying to avenge their world is causing all this destruction for no reason? I think, like, one of my favorite quotes from, like, Chiho was, like, when she was literally confessing her feelings to, like, Sadao and stuff. And she was like, I love you out of my own free will. Yeah. And the only person that can keep me from loving you is me. Yeah, I was like, you go, girl, for, like, I was like, for a 2013 anime, like, that is a great line. I was like, okay. I can get behind this girl. I was and like, you go. You're you, like, you get your man. You go get your man. And then oh, the banter between her and like every single other female character. Yes. It's just so funny. She's and just she like, gets like so jealous. She's like, she... and then Emmy just like, hold up here. I don't care if this is a date. I'm going to interrupt. And they have a huge fight in a cafe. And then there's an earthquake and everything collapses. But, you know, typical fantasy element. <laughs> but like, that was like, I quickly went over that whole entire. Woo. That was fast. But. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to mention about Chio? No, I think we should get on to the next person from Inta Isla. This is my favorite character in this entire <laughs> anime. So his name is Hanzo Urushihara. Urushihara. Like AKA Urushihara. literally Lucifer, the fallen angel. AKA Lucifer. <laughs> I love this character. Honestly, Luc- Lucifer has the best one liners in the whole oh, show. Yeah. Because he's like your typical emo, he's angst, the hermit, like you teenager, know. super socially awkward, very bad social skills. I love this character. He's uh, like for the first half of the anime, he's the villain mm-hmm. of the show. Mm-hmm. You know, he's caused a major mischief. Yes, because he wants to get rid of the hero and Satan and just like one go and prove like he's the superior demon and get back into heaven. Yeah, or get something. back to heaven, like prove himself that he's going to go back to heaven. Yeah, he literally like. Kills both Satan. I don't and, think he. 
Well, I mean, he shoots a giant hole through the guy's chest, so he, everyone yeah. thinks he's pretty dead, but his demon powers are unlocked. And, and then as soon as, demon-y. like, Sadao and stuff gets back, like, his demon form and stuff, he, like, basically pummels Lucifer into, oh, like, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, pummels the crap. And uh, the funniest thing about this character is he's constantly like, why is everyone, like, why, do, why, why does, does everyone hate, hate me? me? <laughs> like, what did I ever do to you? And no one ever says it. They literally just ignore this guy. And they're like, I'm sitting here the whole time, like, because you literally, like, tried killing everyone. Of course you deserve to do a little bitch slap here and there. Like, idiot. Like, I don't know. They'll have they'll have dinner and they he's trying to talk and you hear him murmuring in the background, but no one acknowledges his existence and it's so funny. It's just and like he stays in the like apartment because like Sadao and like Asiel won't let him leave. Mm-hmm. I love this character. I think he's freaking hilarious. I'd like to see more of him in a second season. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, and there's one more. Yes, main there's character. one more main character. Dude, I might butcher this name. Um, Suzuno. Nope, don't even try. Kamazaku. Suzuno Kamazuki. I was close. Also known as Christia Bell. Christia Bell. I was also very close. This is the character that is also from NT Isla. She's the, what's it called? The Inquisitor. Inquisitor? Yes, and she's part of the Inquisition, but she's part of like the Council for. Yeah, she's like Correction the highest ranking one. Something. She pretty much kills everyone that's a heretic in anti Isla. So she comes to go kill Satan. Satan. But she is super, super dry. She's super traditional because all, you know, we talked about this. All she has is traditional information of how yeah. Japan works. So she's wearing all the kimonos and like. Like she thinks that yeah. you get on a train by paying with a watermelon. Yeah. So she, it's just, she's really funny because she's a hard time adjusting to the new culture and stuff. And and they try to like help her and, and stuff. She, and like and everyone knows that she's definitely from Enta Isla, except for apparently Emmy the Emmy hero. is the only, Emma, Emmy and then Chiho were the only ones that didn't know that she They're was like, what? from Enta Isla. Satan's actually really smart. Like that, the he main character. the whole time. He's like, of course, like why did a hot girl move to our little school? creepy town move next little, door next and door. then try to like barge Help into us out it. and she's like and cooks for us like it doesn't make any sense like of course you're baddie bad and this character is really funny but yeah. she also has some interesting character development because she has to choose between her job but also what she wants to do like choosing her friends over that so she has an interesting dilemma she's put through well it's like she has to choose between what she's been told and then what she's really seeing exactly you know because Back then, they all told her, like, Satan's terrible, and, like, you know, Emmy's teamed up with the devil, and blah, blah, mm-hmm, blah, mm-hmm. you know, you need to go kill the devil. It's but just, then yeah. she's, like, seeing all this, and she's like, but it's not true. Yeah. And it's really, really interesting that they do this, and I think they did a good job with this character. And, once again, love another season to see all these characters. But um, an interesting thing they do in the opening is when, after the mid-season climat point when they introduce these new two characters lucifer and this character they're actually seen in the intro walk oh, in really? with them. i was like oh i noticed that i was like that's Whoa. really neat i'm like i like it when they do this stuff so yeah that's nice speaking, how they don't like give it away at the beginning yeah speaking of openings let's talk about the music a little bit um i actually kind of like this opening it's not amazing by any means i didn't even write down who the singer was because i didn't think the song was that great yeah but i thought it was pretty good I thought they did some, there's some moments. Yeah, it was like one that like, I didn't want to watch all the time, but it was every like, you know, I didn't mind watching it. Yeah, you know, like, it's not like I, I didn't want to go I skip hate. through it or yeah. something. But I also wouldn't like go watch it like on repeat, you know, like yeah. some open. Like I don't know if I would add it to my playlist, but. I mean, I'm going to because I add everything to my playlist. Yeah, but it, you know. But I, I liked it. I did some unique, interesting things with the animation. It was funny because, like, it's pretty much them getting up for their daily life. And, like, when Satan gets up, he literally, like, gets out of bed and stubs his toe and rolls around on the ground. And then the other dude is just like, what's going on? And, like, yeah, there's some funny moments. And then, like, they time things. Well, I liked it. The endings, on the other hand, pretty forgettable. Yeah. Meh. I mean, like, the music, like, overall, it was, like, it was okay. It wasn't anything that I, like... Nothing that like stuck out to me, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, that's such an amazing song!" Yeah. Or I mean, anything. I but... don't think the music was like SAO. Like I'm gonna listen to this while I do homework, but I think they did a good job with the music in terms of 
balancing the fantasy elements with slice of life. There was a big contrast yeah. between the two types, and it really set the tone of the moments. Yeah, which one of the I really did like one of the music kind of things though is like when they did like the commercial breaks and stuff. You know, halfway through like the episode. Yeah, and stuff. I have no idea what you're talking about, but. Like, you know, those, like, commercial breaks where it, like, comes up and, you know, and it's kind of like, we'll be right back, you know, and then it comes up again and it's, like, a different character or something and then, like, it continues on sure, with the show. Sure, You You know what I'm talking about. I do. But, I don't remember it in this anime. But it was, like, there's, like, a little song there and stuff. I think for, like, the first half of it, it was, like, kind of like, you know, it was different. It was something that I just noticed okay cool but um <laughs> i also kind of want to talk about the animation a little bit i thought the animation was pretty okay like yeah i thought it was okay i thought it was like pretty average yeah. you know i mean it wasn't anything that like it wasn't bad but then again it wasn't like eye-catching yeah i mean i thought they did a good job i mean on the i'm on the other hand i'm like i'm like i think it did a good job i think for a comedy it was good they well, i'm had... not saying it did a bad job i'm yeah, just you but know like i mean for a 2013 anime about comedy, I think they did a good job. I mean, I wish they did something more spazzy with the fantasy elements instead yeah. of just lights. But there was bright colors that matched the comedy. Um, but that's about it on the animation. I think the character designs were pretty okay. Like, yeah, I mean, like... It was simple, but also to the point. I mean, you could definitely tell, like, if you want to compare, uh, like, other animes from that studio, like, Free Zero. And like Alchemy got kill yeah. and stuff, you can definitely see the similarities in animation mm-hmm. style. Yeah, um, there's a lot of sim- like I mean, I love Steins Gate, so I saw a lot of similarities between the yeah. two. Yeah, but I mean, just like every other anime, it's got like its shining moments and stuff yeah, exactly. in it. Like you know when Satan and Lucifer and less stuff and like you know Satan just like all of a sudden like appears and it's kind of like a creepy moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, I was like, ooh. I had to go back and, like, watch that a few times, you know, because I was like, that was a pretty cool animation right there, you know? You're like, okay, okay, I'll take it. You're like, that was pretty you good. You know, and, like, anything, like, when Satan, like, got a power-up or something, like, I was like, oh, those are kind of creepy moments. They did good there. Yeah. You know, but if, like, you want to compare it to, like, you know, No Gate, No Life, Your Lie in April, Violet Evergarden. Yeah, but, I mean, I also am taking the fact that this is a 2013 anime about comedy, and that's true, you know. And I'm sorry, comedy fans out there, but your guys' enemies are usually not taken. I yeah. isn't given the best. I'm just saying, like, re- compared to, like, those ones, it's pretty yeah, average, true, true, you know? Yeah, true, true, I agree. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much all I have to say on that stuff. Um, I kind of want to talk about overall thoughts and pros and cons. Um, do you have any thoughts you want to talk about? I think a big con is that there's not more of it. I really wish there was a second season, or at least this was 25 episodes. Yeah, not 13. Yeah, I really hope there's a second season. That's the biggest drawback. Um, I love the uniqueness of this anime. The interesting idea of fantasy tied with Slice of Life. The idea of the devil getting a part-time job. That was funny. I really enjoyed that. And it was refreshing. Yeah. I would almost say, like, this would be a good anime to recommend to people. Like... I think this is the anime that really got me hooked on anime. Other than Mir Nikki is definitely what got me hooked on anime. But this one kept me going after watching AOT. This was a complete opposite type of show. And it's what kind of introduced me to everything in the genre. And I think this is really what pushed me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I and As always, like we say, you know, I would prefer that you watch it in English dub. Because, yeah. you know, comedy translates better in your native language Mm -hmm. but but also this anime is only available dub on Funimation it's on Hulu it's on Netflix it's on Crunchyroll but it's only subbed on them and I was like once again I watched it the first time subbed and I thoroughly enjoyed this anime I mean yeah I have about I mean like I said I watched about halfway through of it and subbed and I thought it still was pretty funny oh yeah it's still good like this one is one of those I think even in sub that you will still enjoy it will still be funny. It will still be received well, even if you don't understand the native language. I mean, I would almost recommend watching it twice, once in sub and once in dub, because mm-hmm. I got different things out of it both times I watched it. So, I mean, all power to y'all. Kudos to you guys. You do you, boo. Oh, I have a question. You know, I'm starting this yes. weird thing about me bringing up a strange question at the end of each episode. I don't know why I'm doing this all of a sudden, but I am. My question is... If you were in Emmy's shoes, 
you just got summoned to this world to kill this demon that has killed thousands of people, killed your father, killed your village, and you're brought to this new world and realize that he's weak, pathetic, and he's doing hardly anything. What would you do? Like, like for us, the equivalent is if Hitler got portaled into a new world and we as heroes, me and Mo, for some reason, are going to go kill Hitler during World War II, we go and try to kill Hitler and realize that he's actually living a normal life. He's a decent human being. That's the equivalent in Emmy's shoes. Like, what would you do? I mean, that's so hard to, like, think about, you know? Mm. Because I think there would definitely be always a part of me that wanted to, like, take revenge and, like, you know, life for a life type of thing. I mean, he he literally killed your dad. Yeah, and that's the whole, like, life for a life type of thing. But then again, it's like there's also a part of me that would, like, you know, he still needs to be punished Mm -hmm. for what he did in the home world. But, like, like, if he's fine right where he is, then... Let's just, like, chain him up and lock him up for, like, a 100 years or yeah, something. Yeah, that's true. Or, like, the rest of his life, you that's know? That's true, yeah. But that's kind of my whole thing on it. Mm-hmm. But I think there would always, like, be a part of me that would, like, you know, want a life for a life. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't really know. Once again, we don't know how we would react until we're put in that situation. Once again, this is also an anime. <laughs> it's not supposed to be taken like this, but... I thought it was an interesting question because it is definitely the biggest I mean, plot like, hole in this show, I guess, yeah. almost. The thing that's the hardest to understand. I mean, if I was in Emmy's shoes, I would kill Satan without hesitation. I would just make sure it's Satan and then kill him. I mean, like... If my job was even... in a world that, that is okay and that is your job, I'm thinking also like a and d side. No, I, I would not let him survive because he killed so many people. I don't care if he's using his power to help people. He's also the one causing all these issues because he's here. I'd be like, no, he's not going to get away with this. But it, that's why my life is on anime because – or why my type of person, like my me as Maddie, is yeah. not an anime character because I would not make a story because I would just kill I mean, people. like, even though that this is like a comedy anime and stuff and it's – it it still weaves in those questions like yeah. pretty well, you know, like these deep questions and stuff. And so, like, for all the fans out there who talk to us on a regular basis, if you guys want to discuss with us what you would do in this situation, please reach out to us. Yeah, let's like, have a discussion. Where where would you guys reach us out? Let's shamelessly plug ourselves right now, Mo. Yeah, you can reach out to us on Instagram at Anime Bingers or Bingers Anime Edition. Whoa! 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 I just Hold I about read our Twitter. Our Twitter is Anime Bingers. Reach out to us on there as well. Yeah, so please reach out to us. Um, next week we are doing something really special. We are going to have a guest star, our very first guest star. I know, I'm so excited. excited. Ooh, oh no! Do you want to sing anime openings like we did at the very beginning of this episode? No, that was really bad. Yes, I'm still debating if I want to include that into. Please don't include that. Y'all will know. Y'all will find out when it is included or not. I have all the power. But yeah, guys, we're having our very first guest star next week. It's really exciting. This is a new thing that we're trying out. We're not sure how it's going to go. Yeah. And let us know how it goes whenever it does. If you'd like to see more guest stars or anything, like, let us know. Yeah. Um, We're going to be reviewing Promise Neverland because it's something that our guest stars recently watched. We've all three watched. And and so. It's a good anime and I'm kind of glad we're reviewing it. Um, it will be a nice contrast to this episode and we'll draw a new episode next week in that jar and it'll be great. Yeah. Oh, let's get on to music recommendations. Oh uh, yeah. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, my music recommendation for this week is the underground river by Kevin Pinkin. And it's one of the songs for made in abyss. Oh yeah. I heard that you love the made in abyss songs. Oh Yeah. Dude, let me tell you, the Made in Abyss soundtrack is, like, pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen Made in Abyss yet. I'm, it's on my my very soon-to-do watch list. I said that poorly. I'm sorry, y'all. But I really want to listen to this. I'm going to add it to my playlist very soon, probably. Good. You should. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. What about a... you? Um, Not going to lie, completely forgot to do this part of the podcast until just now. But I have one. Stored in my memoir, uh, memoir, 
Oh, I hated that. Um, I'm going to recommend the very first opening song to Blue Exorcist. Core Pride. Don't remember the band's name. I think it's Underworld. I want to say... Oh, it's Rocky. No, it's Underworld. I think it's Underworld. Um, Do you remember this one? It's the yes. one with the saxophone. Yeah. It's the really cool... The Blue like, Exorcist. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, it's like the drum beat and then it goes... With the saxophone. Yeah. Or just sitting here trying to imitate an opening. <laughs> it's like, all right, Mo, drop me a beat. No. Come on, <laughs> give me the drums. <laughs> this is why we're doing a podcast about talking and not singing. Yeah. But this is a really good song. It's a, it's a, it's kind of a banger. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. It's kind of underground. I feel like I don't think I like a lot of people know about it, so I really like yeah. it. Yeah. But. I think that's all we have I mean, for you I mean, guys this week. That's all we week. got this week. Um, please, of course, please, we're not please. doing a drawing this week. Yeah, because we already know what we're watch- watching. I mean, reviewing. Oh, my God. I'm struggling so hard today. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, please, please, please reach out to us. Um, thank you, guys. Just yeah. Thank you so much for listening to us. I'm shocked that any of you guys listen. Thank you so much for still consistently listening to us. Um, yeah. Go watch Devil's Part-Timer. Oh, please do. It's so good. You You will not regret it. And... We'll see you guys next week. All right. Good luck benching, y'all. All All right, guys. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.